Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all participants from different parts of the world. My name is Leticia Berrispeitia. I am part of the UN Women Training Center team, and I am very glad to welcome you today to this webinar on what, is, what does it mean to be a transformative leader for gender equality, which is also an informative session on the upcoming face-to-face -face workshop, Transformative Leadership Leading for Gender Equality and Women's Rights. Before we get started, allow me to briefly explain how this platform works. As you can see on your monitors, you have a panel at the right side with options. Uh, in order to make a question, please add it to the available chat box below the question function here. Also, please note that you can type questions in this box at any time during the presentation. I will be compiling them during the session for the panelists to respond at the end. Also, please note that this webinar is being recorded and that it will be made available through our YouTube channel for easy access. It's the UN Women Training Center YouTube channel. I am very pleased to present today's panelists, Aruna Rao and Joanne Sandler from Gender at Work and Clemencia Muñoz Tamayo from the UN Women Training Center. Aruna is a co-founder and former executive director of Gender at Work. She's a gender and development expert with over 35 years experience in pioneering new approaches to gender and institutional change. Beginning with her work in BRAC in Bangladesh, she has consulted widely with UN organizations, academic institutions, and development NGOs on gender, development, and organizational change issues. She, she has written extensively on gender equality and institutional change, and she currently serves on the board of Action Aid International and has previously led the boards of directors of the Associations for Women's Rights in Development, AWIT and Civicus. Joanne is Senior Associate of Gender at Work. She's an independent consultant focused on women's human rights and organizational change strategies. Joanne has worked with international organizations, private foundations, academic institutions, and women's organizations and networks for the past 30 years. From 2001 to 2010, Joanne served as Deputy Executive Director for Programs for the UN Development Fund for Women, UNIFEM, and then served on the transition team for the establishment of UN Women. She currently serves on the boards of directors of Breakthrough and Women Win. Clemencia has been Chief of the UN Women Training Center since 2011, and she has more than 20 years experience in the field of international development, gender equality, and women's rights having worked in different UN organizations. So without further ado, I leave the floor to the panelists. So Aruna, feel free to start your presentation. Thank you very much, Leticia. And hello, everybody, and, and welcome to this webinar. Um, Joanne and I are going to tell you a little bit about uh, this course. And I'd like to start off with um, what the vision is for this course. Um, the words transformational leadership are uh, commonly heard um, and uh, they mean different things to different people. But in this course, transformational leadership is about dismantling structures and practices of power that discriminate against women and that are exclusionary in different ways for the purpose of advancing gender equality and women's rights. <clears throat> and we work on doing this within organizations where we work. And we also look at how can we do this in the communities, um, the social movements, the societies that we're part of. Um, one thing that's really important for, uh, for you to know at the beginning is that this one week intensive course um, on transformational leadership for gender equality and women's rights is is a very participatory course it's not a lecture course for a week um, this is really about you discovering your own ways of um, exercising transformational leadership of leadership and and how you exercise power and examining um, your own sources of power and looking at how you can strengthen those um, to be a more effective transformational leader, leader for gender equality and women's rights.
Joanne. So Leticia, I think you can move the screen, the next slide. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Aruna. Thanks to all of you for joining and thanks so much to UN Women for making this possible. Um, building on what Aruna just said, uh, I would say that if we had three words to summarize what this course is about, those three words would be, it's about you. And the reason is summed up in a quote I read recently by a US legislator who um, was a hero in the civil rights movement for racial justice. And he says that the most important lesson he has learned in 50 years working on social transformation is that that transformation has to start within and that to revolutionize society, we must first revolutionize ourselves. So as Aruna said, um, this course is not a lecture course. Um, it is really an opportunity for people who are often very busy in their work, very committed in their work, and who are very focused externally to have the opportunity to be reflexive and think about what it is you're trying to achieve and how you're going to achieve that within the context of a transformative leadership lens. And so this slide looks at definitions of feminist leadership, gender inclusive leadership and transformative leadership. Um, and we present this to make the point that they are not interchangeable, they are related. Um, and we will spend a little bit of time reviewing different approaches to leadership so that you have a better frame for your own. Um, the three definitions that we present here also are communicating that there is a value base to what we work on in the five-day intensive. Um, we would assert that transformative leadership for gender equality would necessarily also be feminist leadership. And so we spend time in the course talking about this and most importantly, creating opportunities for you to apply this in your own practice and purpose. Aruna? Thanks, Joanne. Um, and so one of the um, important conceptual tools that we use in the course is uh, the gender at work framework. Um, and why is this important? Um, it's important because when we, when you as leaders um, think about the kind of change that you're trying to bring about, whether it's in your organizations or in the programs that you're working with, in the communities that you're working with, um, the, this tool helps you visualize what kind of change do you want to see. It, um, it, it has two dimensions. There's a, there's a y-axis and an x-axis. Um, the x-axis goes from um, informal to formal and the y from individual to systemic. And one can visualize change along these dimensions. So at, a, at an informal um, level, um, change needs to happen both at an individual level and systemic level. So at an individual level, when we think about change, we think about um, the kind of consciousness change and changes in capabilities of individuals, men and women, to do the kind of transformative work for gender equality that we care about. Um, at the um, informal but systemic level are um, the social norms that are often discriminatory and deep structures of inequality that live within organizations, within um, all kinds of institutions, whether it's societies, um, uh, families, or uh, formal organizations um, that, are, that are underneath the surface that are not necessarily obvious, but are very powerful and can either inhibit change from happening or facilitate change from happening. So those, you know, those are the, the pieces from on the in, informal side of the framework that one needs to be very conscious of when one thinks about change. Now, what's on the formal side of the framework? This is what is um, what we're all very familiar with. Um, 
the when we think about change for gender equality and women's rights, we think about greater access to resources. Um, in a community that could mean health services, educational services, um, safe cities, uh, things like that. Within an organization that can mean having um, training opportunities, having a budget, having safe spaces to experiment and to strategize and think about um, the kind of change and shape the kind of change that's needed. Um, and that's at an individual level. At a systemic level, again, um, this is also very common, uh, is to work on policies, um, better policies, for gender equality and women's rights. It's where a lot of work um, in our field has happened. And also um, systems of accountability uh, for gender equality and women's rights. Now, um, the important part of this, the, the important message of this framework really is um, that A, change needs to happen in all four domains. So if one, makes tries to make change happen in one domain and not look at the impact or the connection to the other domains um, it's likely that the kind of change we're really hoping for may not actually sustain so there's an interconnection between those domains of change that's important to understand so for example if um um, if if one is, take microcredit schemes um, in in uh, resource access, microcredit is an important um, intervention that's been going on for a long time. Um, and one of the things that microcredit schemes are supposed to um, the intention they're supposed to promote is for women to have a yes greater access to income, but also for that income to enable women. Um, to have a greater say in decision-making within households. Um, now, we've seen the data has clearly shown that, yes, through microcredit, for the most part, women do have greater access to, um, to, to an income uh, that they may not have access, had access to before. However, the, um, the next jump, which is what does that income enable that woman to do, um, around decision making within households clearly depends on the the social structure um, that that woman lives within and that goes directly to the lower left hand quadrant which is around social norms and deep structures um, conditions uh, may not be such that uh, that actually enable her to have greater roles in decision making now, one can use the same framework to look at organizations. Um, we know that when we're looking at, say, look at the issue of sexual harassment, for example, which is very, you know, at the top of our screens right now with the Me Too movement and, um, you know, the, the work that's um, really been highlighted recently and, and the scandals that have been highlighted recently in, in the development sector around sexual harassment. A lot of the work that's been done in organizations to address sexual harassment falls within falls on the the right hand side of the framework so it's rules and policies many organizations most organizations have rules and policies um, around sexual harassment and usually have um, some kind of a mechanism that um, is there to investigate transgression um, and there are also there's also work that's being done on the upper left hand quadrant on consciousness and capabilities uh, around you know making people more aware within an organization of really what sexual harassment means um, and how to behave in different ways um, but the piece of it that's really important which is often not addressed um, in organizations is the, the power dynamics, um, the unequal power dynamics that keeps um, a culture uh, alive where, where there are certain people within an organization that have power um, and support each other to maintain that power. Um, and that makes it difficult for, um, for sexual harassment issues to really be outed and to really be 
addressed in in thoughtful and useful and sustainable ways. So that just gives you an example of how the gender at work framework can help to think about the kind of change you want to see, the interconnections between the domains of change, and most importantly, um, highlight the deep structures and the discriminatory norms and the power dynamics that keep those in place that can thwart progress towards gender equality and women's rights. Um, next slide, please, Letitia. So, so what I've alluded to is that um, that there, you know, there, and in gender at work, we talk about um, deep structures. What are deep structures? Deep structures are a set of values, um, uh, a set of beliefs um, that um, have that are that are informal uh, and formal, that are embedded in in organizational systems, in cultures, um, in structures, and ways of working, some of which are obvious and some of which are not so obvious. Um, and those are the kinds of, and to the extent that those are exclusionary, to the extent that those discriminate, because certain values in organizations clearly are good values um, that we want, that organizations want to promote. But um, there are other values that could have unintended negative impacts on certain populations within organizations that can have, and some of them um, clearly discriminate uh, against women and other populations within organizations. So feminist uh, a transformational leadership, and as, as uh, Joanne said earlier, for us, transformational leadership for gender equality really is feminist leadership. That is not only about um, individuals, your, your, uh, yourself and looking at yourself, but it's also you looking at the context where you work and trying to uncover what these deep structures are within your context um, so that you can strategize about how to um, make those more visible in the context where you work and find ways to effectively um, change them and challenge them. And we also, all of us, um, carry deep structures and, and unconscious biases within ourselves. And so the course also enables you to um, reflect on what those might be, to look at your own sense of, of power, to look at um, some of your own uh, biases, which may be unconscious, um, but then also to look very systematically at um, structures of discrimination and the ways in which they're reproduced within organizational systems and practices, and then how to break those. Joanne? Thank you. Thank you, Aruna. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm not muted. So yeah, so building on what um, Aruna said, when, when we conceptualize this course, and Aruna and I do a lot of um, work together on facilitation and training, and, and this will be the fourth course we've done with UN Women on transformative leadership for gender equality. And when we were conceptualizing this with Clemencia and the training center, we had in mind the participant who is not necessarily the gender advisor or the gender uh, expert, but the person who may be managing a program, managing a team that has a strong focus on gender equality, but that person doesn't necessarily, um, is not necessarily deeply immersed in gender equality. And what we've learned over the over the evolution of the course is that um, we get a huge spectrum of participants from those who are very well versed in gender equality um, to those who uh, have an organizational mandate to advance gender equality and a team mandate, um, but that's not their everyday work. And that diversity in the course is really a, a, a strong advantage um, to the course, I think. And 
that is um, one of the reasons why we wanted to present this framework, because this is kind of the path that, that the participants in the course take. And as, it's, as it says on the bottom, this is adapted from the extraordinary work that Srilata Batliwala, who was the chair of Gender Works Board for many years, has done on feminist leadership. So the five Ps are, are the kind of pathway that we offer to participants to reflect on how they want to, to define their purpose, um, understand their power, um, really unpack the principles that guide their work, deepen their practice, and identify strategic partnerships to move on the priorities that they um, that they they encounter in their work. And so what happens in the course is that we kind of work through these five P's. So each participant actually leaves with an action plan to bring what you've learned in the course back to whatever site it is that, that you want to um, use this. So whether it's your workplace or a project or something else. Um, and, um, and you develop that over the course of the week as you learn different aspects of theory, practice. There's a lot of use of case studies. There's, as Irina said earlier, a lot of participatory and group work, as well as time for individual reflection. The course is divided into three modules. So the, the five Ps are the pathway. The gender at work framework is one of the key analytical um, tools we use. And that takes place in the, in the context of three modules. The first module, which is the longest, is really the introduction of some of the concepts, the opportunity to really clarify the institutional context in which you work. As Aruna said, really looking deeply at um, both the formal and the informal side so that you can develop a purpose and an understanding of what kind of practice you might want to use to be able to advance your own ideas. Then module two um, is much more about strategy. So in module two, we start to look at what kinds of strategies you want to consider to bring your purpose forward. And module three is the opportunity. Uh, there's opportunity for um, sharing and feedback from participants throughout. Module three is the opportunity to present your ideas, get feedback on them, and to really make a commitment to move forward. Uh, does this now go to Clemencia? Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. I just like to provide some uh, details about the course um, content dates, registration, and so on. Although some of it has already been mentioned, as Leticia said at the beginning, this is a face-to-face -face training. It doesn't have an online part, although we will be sharing some readings prior to the session for you to arrive with some uh, basic work done before. The intended audience, as Joan was also saying, it's it's meant for mid to senior managers from government, civil society organizations, development agencies, the UN system and private sector, who are responsible for gender equality outcomes in their organization, but not necessarily gender advisors, as Joan was already mentioning. Um, we have, as, as was mentioned, we found that Getting a mix of both makes enriches the entire experience and uh, of the participants in the training. Um, the already uh, also was mentioned by Joanne that the course has three modules, uh, defining the the first one on concepts, second on strategies, and the third one on the opportunity. And uh, what is the general objective of this training is in reality to identify the co components and opportunities and challenges to foster gender inclusive transformative leadership for uh, gender justice in your respective organizational contexts. Also to understand how gender justice amplifies intersectional approaches to social justice in the outcomes of your 
organizational efforts as well as in the organizational culture, referring to the model that was described, the framework that was described by Aruna earlier. And finally, also to catalyze organizational and team cultures that reward intersectional thinking and respect for women's rights and human rights. And articulate the, your own vision, as was mentioned by both Joan and Aruna, and your specific actions uh, that you will take to and support needed to lead gender justice within your organization, organization's programs, strategies, outcomes, etc. The training center methodology is applied in this case uh, as in all trainings and is grounded on feminist principles and pedagogies. Uh, it employs adult learning, participatory, adaptive, emancipatory, experiential, and interactive approaches. The training also fosters critical examination of power privileges. In this particular case, it was uh, well described by Aruna and the biases. Uh, and additionally, the course seeks to provide you participants with a strategic set of tools and lenses that you can or that can be used to implement your plans to lead gender equality and for, for gender equality and women's rights within the organization. Now, the date has been set from 4 to 8 June uh, in the Vienna International Center, that is the UN premises in Vienna, Austria. And it's a five day training and the deadline for registration is April 8th, so the end of this week. To register, you just need to go into the portal, which is mentioned here in the slide, and fill the form through um, through this portal. The price is 2,500 per person, and there is group discounts for uh, organizations with more than four, three to four participants will get some discount. We have already. Uh, presented our facilitators, Gender at Work, uh, Aruna and Joanne, and the training center. And as Joanne mentioned, um, this course, it's in its fourth edition. So before we move into the questions, I'd like to share with you that uh, this will be uh, our fourth edition, that we have received uh, systematically very positive feedback and ratings. Uh, and such as the ones you will see on the screen, and I'd like to share with you. Um, the, the first one is, I can tell you the extent to which this course helped me and enhanced my self-confidence. I was able to identify the hidden power in our group and tell them about how this is affecting the agenda of women's issues and how to reduce it. This helped me to dismantle some barriers. I'm executing the plan I expose at the end of the course. This one was a participant from Lebanon. Another one, an NGO manager, said, I found planning what we were going to do over the coming months using what we have learned to be a really useful part of the course as it made me include a half-day session to share some of the course with all my colleagues in the Asia region. If I hadn't made that promise to myself at your training, I may not have included this session. So with, uh, with this said, we, move, we can move now uh, on to Leticia for questions and answers. Thank you. Thank you so much, Clemencia, and thank you, uh, Aruna and Joanne, as well, for your presentations. And just to remind, quickly remind participants that we still have some time for them to to post in some questions. I'm going to project now on the, our screens the one we have, the ones we have received uh, for now. And the, the first one is by um, Theophilus, and he says, in a country like Nigeria, where oppressive gender laws are a norm, what practical steps can one take to change the plight of women, especially those in rural communities? Alternatively, what can be done to change? So um, I believe this question is for Joanne and Aruna. Okay, hi, thank you so much for that question. And I would say that there is, first of all, already a lot being done in Nigeria. There are, I think, very strong women's rights organizations and networks. Um, 
that are working in both urban and rural settings. Um, there's so much that can be done from, and I think it maps to what Aruna presented earlier um, in the four quadrants. And I would say in Nigeria, there are examples of all of those initiatives. There are um, legal and policy changes that are happening, everything from um, creating more opportunities for women in leadership positions and in politics uh, at the lower right-hand level, to creating more resources for um, women. And then on the left hand, I think that is where in Nigeria and in other countries, there has to be far more work on changing the attitudes of individuals and also confronting the deep structures um, that hold gender inequality in place. Thank you so much. I, I don't know. Um... I don't know if you have something to, for complementing this, or no. I, I mean, I, I agree with, uh, uh, with Joanne. I think there's uh, whenever we um, uh, look at any country, you know, we and and look at the extent of the the problems that are faced um, by women in those countries. Um, um, you know, the first thing to to do is to really look at the web of organizations. Um, that are already working, as Joanne said, in that country, and there are many in Nigeria. And so, um, so then, you know, where one helps, how one can uh, can add to the work, how one can strengthen the work, really, um, you know, has so much to do with with what is already going on and where the the opportunities are um, politically and organizationally to actually strengthen the work. Mm -hmm. Right. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, so we have a, a comment by Priya who says, hi, I could not join earlier due to an <laughs> internet issue. I just wanted to um, to highlight that we're going to have the complete recording of this session available through our YouTube channel. And it will be shortly uploaded, or shortly afterwards the, the session ends. So that's just a quick reminder. And then we have some uh, questions regarding uh, the technical issues of the face-to-face -face workshop. So um, it says, where and when will this face-to-face -face workshop be running and who is eligible to participate? This question is from Aster. So uh, this question is for Clemencia. Um, I, Leticia, if you want, I see there are a couple of questions that I can respond to. Yes, um, thank you, Clemencia, perfect. The, as I said, the face-to-face -face workshop will, be, will take place in Vienna, Austria from 4 to 8 June. And who is eligible for partic to participate, as we mentioned, is practitioners with managerial roles and responsibilities and or with functions to provide strategic or visionary guidance to the offices or organizations where they work for. We have a limit of 25 participants, so it's also, you know, when we get the, the first 25, not just the first 25 registered, but the first 25 screened with eligible criteria, uh, which means balance and the managerial roles and balance between north and south and, and so on, we'll have to choose the 25 uh, that are um, that are the first selected 25. Uh, then the course is not available in Egypt, but you can go, you can request through the country office, uh, UN Women's Country Office, if they can organize one, provided we have uh, a critical number of participants in the country and the course is delivered in English, not in Arabic. The cost of the training does not include accommodation. Um, Tickets and per diems are to be borne by participants. Um, it only includes the, the tuition fees. Um, what is the other one? No, that's. Um, well, we have another que another question that is not typing Clemencia that it, it's wondering about the currency of the price because we said it was two two thousand five hundred, but it's oh, also God. US US but, dollars. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So I, we have another thematic questions for Aruna and Joanne. It says, uh, Caroline, from Caroline, it says, we have embarked on a project on gender transformative approaches to agricultural training and skills development. 
We have huge barriers such as land ownership and land access. How do we reach transformation for issues such as access to land, which is such a contentious issue? So um, feel free to reply, um, Aruna or Joanne. Aruna, do you want to start? Um, you're right. It is um, access to land is a is a land ownership in in any country is a very very contentious issue, um, and and multiply kind of nuanced because uh, land ownership is is uh, there are layers and layers in any in in a lot of places. Um, it's not very clear uh, who actually owns the land or. So it's a very contentious issue, and women's access to land ownership is a very contentious issue. Um, I would um, I would uh, go back to the gender at work framework and um, and look at your. Obviously, we don't have enough detail on your project to answer that. But um, if you go back to the framework and start, if you can, you know, as your you said, your project is about um, uh, skills. Um, was that was that it? Uh, Let, Leticia, was it about skills and training women um, in skills and something else? I missed. That. Yes, uh, skills development and land ownership and uh, for the barriers of land ownership and access. Yeah. So in so uh, so skills. If it if it's focusing um, on skills development, then it's focusing on the upper right hand quadrant of the gender at work framework. Um, I'm not, you know, you haven't specified what kinds of skills, um, but clearly the skills development in agriculture, um, I would assume, are related to then use, um, connect, connected to uh, using those skills on um, for agricultural development, um, and the 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 block you're saying you're pointing out is access to land. So a uh, beginning you know, way in which we would um, start investigating that or looking at that issue is to look then at you know, what are the rules and policies that are currently in place around land ownership? Um, uh, what are, the, what are the, the social norms and deep structures that are, that are inhibiting women's access to land? Um, and there are different kinds of uh, access, of course. Um, uh, and in particular, you're pointing out land ownership. Um, and then sort of the upper left-hand quadrant, the, the kind of the, the um, consciousness and capabilities of the women to, to know their rights, to be able to organize for their rights, um, and then to look for strategic opportunities to do that. So there, these, there are many different elements um, in that problem that you've defined. And of course, all of this sits within the, the context where you are working. Um, and, and different opportunities are will be available in those contexts and there'll be different barriers. So, um, you know, we're not able to answer your question directly, but what we can do is to suggest a way of, um, of and, and I'm sure you, you already know of you and are using different ways of analyzing this issue. Um, but to look at the issue in a, in a holistic way, um, using a conceptual framework like the gender at work framework, um, and then sort of trying to figure out, also learning from what others are doing in other contexts about um, gaining access to land and strategies that they're used, and then see to what extent those kinds of strategies can be used in the context where you're working. And I think, you know, an important part of it is to map out, you know, where your opportunities and your barriers are in terms of the gender at work framework, and then begin to map a theory of change, which again, which you can use the framework to do, to, um, to work more uh, on, to work in the in the project that you're describing, to um, try to address this very contentious issue of land ownership, Joanne. Yeah, no, and I would just add to that that this is an area where there is a huge amount of practice already, um, and both transnational networks, regional networks, national, 
uh, work and I think a very ripe area for learning and networking. Um, and as Aruna said, you know, context is everything. So the work, for instance, in Rwanda, which um, has been in some ways exemplary on expanding women's land ownership and tenure, is very different than the work in Vietnam on expanding women's land ownership and tenure. Uh, and that would be true around the world. And I think one of the things that would happen in the course is that if this were an area, for instance, that you were going to work on in relation to your program, your own leadership, et cetera, um, that as we go through the gender at work framework and also use the 5P model, that you would be looking at clarifying what exactly is the purpose? What exactly is it that you want to bring to this? Um, where is the power of your organization, of the groups of women that you're working with, of your, of the allies that you can imagine? And importantly, who are the, who are the partners that can help you learn and advance and strengthen the work that you want to do? So it's a great question. Thank you for that. Okay, thank you so much, both Joanne and Aruna, for your answers. Um, we are uh, reaching the end of our presentation. We're running out of time, but uh, we uh, still have time for doing a couple of more questions. So I have another um, thematic one for Aruna and or Joanne. It says, thank you for this very useful webinar. I wonder if I had understood correctly that the focus of the training is on transforming internal organizational culture and your own bias, biases as a leader. Could you explain this approach a bit more? It's from Amarzana. Okay, I'll, I'll start. Um, that is one of the key focuses of the course. You're absolutely right, Amarzana, because we do spend a fair amount of time uh, analyzing your organizational culture. Um, from all different perspectives and also time for you to reflect on both your power and privilege as well as unconscious bias and and things like that. Um, it's not the sole focus, it's a strong focus. Um, the analysis that we're doing is also looking at the broader context, the context in which your organization works, the context in which your purpose related to advancing gender equality lives. So I would say it's a blend of focusing on your organizational context, your personal, as well as the larger. So in some ways, if you think about it from a, we go from a micro to a meso to a macro perspective, and we keep, throughout the course, we keep um, probing how those all impact each other. What I would say, however, is what is unusual about this course in the context of the kinds of courses that multilateral and bilateral um, organizations tend to offer is that there is a strong focus on uh, reflection and really time for you to think about um, what your aspirations are and where you really want to make a difference. Aruna. Yeah, no, I think um, you've said it very well, Joanne. Um, you know, whenever people um, come into a course, right, they, like you, Amarsana, you, um, you come from somewhere. You are, you live within a certain, I'm assuming, organizational context. Uh, um, or even if you don't live within an organizational context, um, you have work that you you want to do, uh, so you come in with um, with a context, and um, and and I think just to you know underline what Joanne said, um, the the process of that you go through in this course um, really hones in on and and helps you to strengthen. Um, your ability to achieve your purpose in your context. Um, mm -hmm. So, and then you, you know, you walk out of this course, this five-day course, with um, something that works for you in your context. So, um, it's not, you know, just learning about organizational biases in a theoretical way, um, and neither is it learning about, you know, um, 
your own, you know, sort of leadership style, uh, again, un unconnected to a purpose uh, and a plan and your own power, um, it's all connected. And I think um, that's really, in that way, um, it's this is a huge strength of this course. It, it starts where people are. Um, it brings resources and ideas and, and practical um, exercises to bear that really focus, help you focus on what you want to do as a leader um, and how you can strengthen that and how you can understand that better and strategize about how to achieve that and then walk out of that um, with, with a plan on how to do that. And I, and I think just to add one thing we haven't stressed that is emerging as we do the course um, over and over is that what you also walk out with is a network of people uh, who you've spent five intensive days with. And it, I think it's been one of the joys for, for Aruna and, and me is to see how within a pretty quick period of time, the group... Uh, coheres in a way because you do learn a lot about the contexts and challenges and opportunities of of your peers in the workshop and groups have been self-organizing to continue to stay in touch with each other to offer mutual support to offer insights resources and guidance um, and I think that's another it's another intention of the course is to create that that support for networking and also to to um, build alliances across organizational contexts and geographies yeah i think that's really important and we structure the the course um in such a way that you have a group that becomes your homeroom group um you know right. and you and it's a group that you go back to you keep going back to that group for um, support, for advice, for um, critique, for um, help um, in clarifying, you know, your ideas. So it becomes your homeroom group, and and that's part of the reason why, um, you know, they they when people emerge from the course, um, as Joanne said, the the connection um, between the people in the course is is really much stronger than it would be if you just you know then then otherwise if, if we didn't have that kind of structure to the to the course excellent well thank you joan and aruna both so much for your reply and um, we have a last question for clemencia and in this occasion uh, participants ask and um, i have i have already applied when would would i have a response and this question is from asia too so clemencia uh, thank you, Asia. Uh, registration closes this week on Sunday, and I think at the latest by the end of April you will have a response. Um, so I think by May 1st you will have a response. Excellent. Thank you as well, Clemencia, for these replies. Um, we um, regrettably have run out of time already. We know that you, there are some questions pending that we will be replying through um, our email. I also wanted to remind you that all this information and, and more can be found at trainingcenter.unwomen.org of the Transformative Leadership for Gender Equality course and some other. So I just wanted to thank you all so much for your questions and for connecting today. And also thanks the, the panelists, Aruna, Joanne, and Clemencia. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Thank very you. much, everyone. Thanks, Thanks to all. Thank you. Thank you.